In this video, we'll talk about using volumetric lights in Redshift. Now, volumetric lights are amazing in Cinema 4D, and they're even better, much better, in Redshift. I'll start by first deleting this dome light. I'll create an area light instead. And I'll make this light a little smaller, like that. And maybe lift it up a little. There. And I'll pull it back. Maybe a bit more. And you see, the light is a bit too bright here, so I want to change the intensity of the preview. I'm going to go to the area light, general, and the preview, and the illumination adjustment. I'll just lower this down like this. Remember, when I do this, only the preview here gets affected, and nothing happens to the final render. Let me zoom back in. With the redshift lights, we have a tab called volume. If I go here, and if I increase the contribution scale, you can think of this like the strength. You'd expect to see a result here, a different result, but nothing happens. In order for volumes to be rendered, you need to have an object called the environment in here. Let me just go and create it. So I'm going to go to redshift, objects, and this is the environment object I want to create. But since I actually use this more often than some of these lights here, I'd like to actually add this to my interface. So I'll tear this apart, right click on one of these, go to customize palettes. I can now go and add the redshift environment here. And I don't actually want some of these objects here, like the IES light. I'll go and double click here to remove it. I'll also remove the portal light, which we haven't talked about. And I'll actually remove the physical sun and replace that with the redshift sun and sky rig that we talked about in the previous lesson. I'll double click to remove this as well and then drag the Redshift Sun and Sky Rig down here. I actually tend not to use the Infinite Light as much either, so I'll just go and delete this as well by double-clicking. And now I can come out of this, and then come out of this Customize Commands, and then I want to save this as my new custom layout. So I'll go to Window, Customization, and I'll save the layout as... I'll save this as Redshift. It will ask me to confirm. I'll go and say yes, and now we can actually go and create the redshift environment. Now the whole purpose of this environment is so that we have some air particles, or dust particles in the air, I should say, so that the light can scatter around. See what happens when I create one. The light scatters around like crazy, and everything is overexposed. Let me now go to the area light, come down to the contribution scale, and lower this down. This is a number that you tweak between 0 and 1. The higher this number, the higher the contribution will be. The lower the number, the less of a contribution this light will have on the overall volume. But instead of using some tiny numbers here, you can actually go to the redshift environment, and then come down to scattering, and then lower this down. This you can think of like the overall scattering of all of the lights. So the lower this is, the less the light will scatter. That's all of the lights, not just this one. So had we created other lights, they would also scatter less. Now, if you can see, this looks a bit too foggy. So what I could do is to go to the area light, and if I come down to general, and I can scroll down, I can lower down the spread of this area light. You see, this will now start turning into more of a directional light, like a spotlight almost. And now it's facing away from the objects. Now, at this point, let's switch over to R25, where we have the more recent version of Redshift, so I can show you a couple of updates for the volume tools. So here I am in R25, and if I go and create an area light, and let's say if I go and lift this up first, and then pull this back. Let me zoom out a little more. Now you'll notice that there's no volume tab here either, just like some other tabs are missing, the volume tab is also missing. But the volume settings are now going to be inside the details tab. If I click here, under contribution, I now have the volume contribution here, which is set to 1 by default. So if I go and create an environment, you see the light automatically has full contribution. I can go to the light, come down to details, contribution, volume, and then drag this down. Let me also go to the Lights Object tab, and then bring down its spread, so it looks more like a spotlight. And we are back in business. This is still bright, of course, so I'm going to bring the intensity down. 
And that's where the volume settings of the lights are going to be in the new version of Redshift. Let me now switch back over to R24 so we can continue from where we left off. In order to get something to point at an object, there's a neat trick I'll show you. If I get this object to be selected, and then go to Cameras here, and choose Use Camera, and this option here, Selected Object as Camera, allows you to use this object here, the light in this case, as a temporary camera. If I go in here, now I'm seeing the scene through the perspective of my light. As I fly around using one, two, or three, you see I'm actually moving the light around, not just the perspective of the camera, but the light itself, because the light is now the camera. I can now come out of that light, and now that's where the light's pointing towards. You can see the light's actually coming towards here. Let's say, for example, if you wanted the light to shine on these two birds, I can go to cameras again, use camera, selected object as camera, and if I fly up above the birds like this, I can then come back out. Now that's where the light's shining towards now. The overall light here is still a little too bright, so I'll go to the intensity multiplier, lower this down, let's say about there, and in order to show you some more settings, I'll actually go and switch to a different scene, so I'll just go press Command N or Control N on PC, and I'll just go and create some text, maybe change the text here to something a bit more interesting, and pick a different font, let's say this, the show card Gothic, interesting font choice there, if I go and make this also center aligned or middle aligned, and then press H to center everything I'm seeing here. It looks like this is actually cutting off now a little bit. If you see the N here actually is completely visible, but here it cuts off. So I'm gonna zoom out by using the scroll wheel, and then I'll hold down the Alt key to center this again, like that. And now what I'm gonna do is to go and create an area light again, push this in front of the text, increase the height a little. I'll also create an environment. Go to the area lights, volume tab, and increase the contribution scale a little bit. And then go to general. Come down to the spread, and then lower this down. We can of course change the actual shape. If I go to rectangle, set this to be let's say a disc. You can see how this light changes to a disc. I'll stick to a rectangle for now though. I'll then go and increase the size, like that, so it's wider. And then maybe make it slightly taller, like that. I'll go to a side angle, let's say here. I think this is still a little too bright, so I'll go to the environment object. Lower down the scattering amount. Let's say there. And then we have the attenuation here. You can think of attenuation almost like the distance that the volumetric lights travel. The higher this number, the more attenuated the light will be. The lower the number, the less attenuated the light will be. In other words, if you increase this number, the light will travel less. Let me show you. If I push this towards right, let me zoom out a little bit here so we can see what's going on. And I'm going to increase the overall scattering as well so it's a little brighter. And then maybe this light's contribution to be slightly higher as well, like that. So under the environment, as we push the attenuation towards left, you see the light travels more as I zoom out. And as I walk the attenuation towards right, you see this will diminish quicker, like that. I'll put this somewhere in the middle maybe, here. Another interesting option here is the phase. Phase changes the volume that you're seeing based on your camera angle. Let me show you what I mean. If phase is set to zero, this light will be volumetric regardless of your angle. As I fly around, the light you see will always be volumetric. However, if I increase the phase, the light will be more volumetric, or I should say the volumetric part of the light will be more visible towards the camera. Right now you can see I'm actually behind the light, so I see less volume, but as I fly around, the volume becomes more and more visible. So this is now phased towards the camera. As you decrease the phase, it's exactly the opposite. So as I push this towards left, 
the volume becomes more and more visible as we go behind the light now. As I fly behind, you see the volume becomes more prominent. That's what the phase is, and if I set this back to zero, the light's always going to be volumetric regardless of our angle. We can of course go and add some color to this volumetric light, if I go and increase the saturation here, and then maybe give this a different color, like that, that changes the color of the scattered light. Now with these settings in mind, let's go back to our previous scene, and here we'll just go to the redshift environment, I'll increase the attenuation, so the light fades out a little quicker, I'll also increase the scattering a little bit, like that, so that these lines here are a bit more prominent, these god rays as they're called. I'll then select the light itself, and then increase the contribution scale a little bit, so that the overall effect is a bit brighter, like that. But as you can see, this is still a little too bright. You might actually like this result, I personally don't, so I'm going to go and make this light a little smaller by pressing T on the keyboard to get my scale tool, and I'll just scale this down a little, like that. I'll then go to the light, and then down to general, and then come down to exposure to make this a little less bright. I'll just lower this down towards left, like that. And you see since I'm decreasing the exposure, the actual volume gets dimmer as well. So in order to compensate for that, I'll go to the volume tab, and then increase the contribution scale, like that. As you can see, this is almost always a balancing act. You can also add some texture to this volume. If I go to general, if you remember from one of the previous lessons, you could go and add an image, if I just go here, and then let's say add this softbox sample. I'm not going to copy it. Now inside the volume, I had the texture of that softbox. If I go to the spread of the light, lower this down, you can actually see the texture much better. And as I increase this, this gets a little blurry, but then you start seeing the texture on the volume as well. Another neat trick that I use a lot is to shine a light, a volumetric light, through an object. Let me first go and disable this area light for a second. I'll go and create a new one. And I'll just go and fly around so I can see the rest of the scene, and then pull the light back, a bit more maybe. I'll also go and create a plane through which this light can shine. So I'll come down here and make this a little smaller, like that. And then I'll rotate it like this. And then maybe pull this back towards the light, so it's actually blocking the light first. And then I'm going to go and create some holes on this plane. Now we can cut some holes on this plane in quite a few different ways. But a quick way that I use a lot is this atom array here. If I go and add the plane inside the atom array, it will turn it into spheres and cylinders. And the density of these will depend on how many segments you have. So if I want the holes to be bigger, I can just go and lower the segments down to 5 by 5 I'll now go to the atom array, set the sphere radius to let's say 10, and the cylinder radius to 10. Let me actually go and zoom into this by using the scroll wheel on my mouse. And then what I'm going to do is to take the atom array, and then drag this inside the light, so that as I move the light around, like this, the atom array will move with the light. So it's almost like a grid that I locked in front of that light now. As I rotate that light, you see the grid rotates with it. I'll lift this light up, pull it back, maybe rotate it down a little, and then lift it up further. And what I'm going to do now is to go and set this light's volume contribution scale to be different than zero, so we can actually see some volume, and its spread to be lower, like that, so the light doesn't spread as much. So it's only shining through these holes here, like that. I can now go and push the light further back, and maybe lift it up, like that. And maybe bring it this way a little bit. And I'll zoom right in here. And now it looks like the contribution is a bit too high. So I'll go to the light, volume, and then bring the contribution down. And also I'll go to the redshift environment, lower down the scattering. And let's see what this would look like if we actually shine this light through a surface again, like that image that we used earlier. So I'm going to go and select the light first, and then come down to general, and then down to the path here, 
and I'll pick the same softbox sample. And I'm not going to copy it. I can't quite see those holes anymore, so let me zoom back out a little bit. Now I can. So in order to make these a little more obvious, I can go to the light again and lower down the spread further. Like that. And then increase the light's contribution a little bit. So now we can see these. But the light itself is a bit too bright. You can see these bits are a bit too hot. I can go to the light again, general, and this time bring down the intensity multiplier. Let me zoom in now to see what this looks like close up, like there maybe. And I'm finally going to increase the spread a little bit so that the light isn't as focused. Remember, the volumetric light doesn't need to be an area light. It could actually be any other light as well. For example, if you want to go and add a spotlight to this, let me just go and create a spotlight here. Let me just turn off my area light for a second. And if I take the spotlight back, lift it up. If I want this to be a volumetric light, I go to its volume tab, increase its contribution, and now you see we get some volume coming from the spotlight. I can of course go to general, come down to spot cone angle. As I increase the cone angle, I can make this wider or more focused as I decrease it. One more thing I want to mention here is that when you go and change the color of the environment, so if I go and increase this saturation here, you see the scattered light becomes green, like we expect, but the light itself doesn't. Let me zoom in first. You see, the light still shines white here, but the scattered light is green. So if I go and select the spotlight, and then come down to the general color settings, I can now make this green, and now the light isn't shining white anymore, but it's green instead. And you can actually combine these. So if I go and push these around, you see my green volume gets combined with the red tint of the light here. And that's how the volumetric lights work in Redshift. Before you go, if you want to win a free, live and fully interactive course, you can enter our weekly prize draw, where you can win a five-day course normally worth over $1,000. All you have to do is to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon here and cross your fingers. So don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.